Hello and a very warm welcome to everyone. I am Shrija Agrawal and you are watching the Mint special series Mint RegTech Conversation Demystifying Regulation and Technology. The financial industry is no longer stranger to technology compliance with regulatory requirements. Managing regulatory processes within through technology has been termed RegTech or regulatory technology. RegTech is used to cover innovative digital solutions via AI, biometrics, machine learning and big data. so that compliance could become efficient to facilitate regulatory reporting compliance and monitoring but it is not just this quick moving development of innovation that undergirds the rise of regtech it also is the massive cost of compliance that affects the cost of doing business india has a long way to go to acclimate to all the digitization and disruption there have been various disruptions cryptocurrency being the most prominent is still at the heart of all conversations right now they yet to learn how to aptly regulate and navigate these unknown waters or the unknown risk as it is called as we are jolted to a black swan blindness how will india absorb the potential of blockchain tech and its cross sector applications will aspects like trade finance be able to even adhere to monitoring obligations even if india were to able to be very quickly adapt to the required regulatory revolution how will india cope up with the deep bureaucratization and automation that could be induced thus very happy to put together a compelling architecture platform with none other than india's largest and the oldest law firm kitan and company or the mint rectech conversation team is to find regulation and technology to discuss debate deliberate and perhaps come up with some solutions on some of these ideas which require such kind of conversations but in this recent partnership with ketan and company and our first dispatch is talking about deregulation or demystifying cryptocurrency regulations in india please have me welcome two partners from ketan and company shudeep bhattacharya ji and sanjay khan nagra to help us decode some of these trends sanjay and shudeep to welcome to the show my first question and you know before we begin this conversation really is that i would like to thank both of you and it's a sheer pleasure and privilege to welcome both of you to this conversation i think it's a good idea to begin this entire narrative with a very open ended question is that cryptocurrency isn't really a legal tender yet and if you transact in crypto it's still e- it's still kind of illegal and regulations are still being formed that is really man there is a constant slug fest between the entrepreneur slash the investor fraternity and the regulators so what really is the missing piece here sanjay i can begin with you and then pranushri to on this one yeah sure sure hi shreya thank you for having us here um i think uh, i think it's always a tussle between uh, the fear of the unknown versus accepting and you know something which is uh, which may have certain impact which you are not really sure of so for instance uh, if we if you look at the government dilemma today uh, it is really in a difficult situation where it does not know how probably uh, allowing cryptocurrencies will play out at the same time uh, there is innovation forget cryptocurrency for a minute uh, for any innovation uh, uh, of any nature it is always a dilemma of not knowing what that innovation will do in an actual world um if there is if there is a particular app which permit people to interact in a particular way uh we can take example of our cab aggregators when they first came on the horizon it was very difficult for regulators to accept that uh, the the existing motions of uh, a person owning a taxi and and another person just hiring the taxi to go from point a to point b Uh, would be taken over by an app based aggregation model wherein uh, ownership is with somebody uh, driver is somebody else the person connecting the two is somebody else and the person connecting uh, payment and distributing the payment might be someone else so i think it was only after the government saw for an extended period of time as to how cab aggregation is actually beneficial to people overall how it is uh, bringing down uh the cost of travel uh the road congestion etc etc and that is when uh, and the government also realized with the help of the entrepreneurs and uh, the uh, uh, some uh, certain teams or certain evangelists who were helping the government figure out how to deal with these aspects in a in a regulatorily compliant way and that is after those efforts of 4 5 years 
uh, that the government came out and uh, that was a state subject and therefore various states uh, came out with regulations and finally we have a robust sort of a regime across various states for uh, cab aggregation i think we should take a cue from there and uh, and that that sort of becomes a playbook that applies on each uh, innovation now how cryptocurrency and some of the other innovations which will happen in future are different from say cab aggregation is cab aggregation was not that fundamental a change or into what was happening already it was it was a change yes but it was not a fundamental change of the nature that cryptocurrencies are right and therefore it cryptocurrencies become that much more difficult to regulate for the government even if they uh, want to slot it into one of the categories of existing regulations it is uh, a difficult problem for the governments and not only for the indian government uh, governments across the world are facing similar problems however i think we we understand everybody now understands what the regulatory concerns are problems are now i think is the time when we need to figure out a way to solve that and figure out a way to regulate and do something about it because this regulatory limbo cannot cannot go on forever we can't just sit back and say that okay fine we'll see how it plays out in the unregulated space for next 5 years and 10 years and then see what to do about it because we have seen in the past 5 6 years and we can discuss about it as you go along in this conversation as to how um, the government has been sort of uh, uh, non committal to regulating it uh, there have been talks of banning it formally there were legislations which were proposed uh, rbi came out with certain circulars then supreme court uh, ruled on those circulars etc etc and now we are in this uh, in this uh, regulatory regulatory vacuum where right now nobody knows whether it is right wrong or will it be banned will it not be banned etc so i think right now the, con- the the most important concern from uh, if if you ask me my biggest concern would be if there is somebody in the government who would be uh, looking at uh, ways and means to understand this technology um, uh, on a on a on a daily basis because this is a very evolving technology it changes every day we had cryptocurrencies until now now we are entering into the regime where nfts have become uh uh mainstream as we call it uh and and we don't know where it is going to go from here so somebody has to really track it very closely and then make sure that the innovation is understood by the regulators and this 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 divide between the regulators and innovators is sort of bridged on a regular basis on various fronts and cryptocurrency should be a good start there okay thanks for that sanjay i would like to sort of bring you in shudeep so we just heard sanjay what he said that there should be no room for regulatory vacuum and this entire status of regulatory limbo should not continue for long and this constant flux phase between the innovator community and the regulator community has to come at a common ground and solve and come up with some solutions and he also gave the example of how perhaps we navigated our way in the cab aggregator space i wonder what really are your opening points to this conversation I mean, I mostly echo what uh, Sanjay said that this is clearly yet another example of uh, technology outpacing laws and regulations, and uh, we have had multiple such scenarios earlier. One of which is the you know uh, the Uberization as we call it now, uh, and so we have had that uh, four five years journey. I think it's high time. I mean, crypto also has had that journey. Has we have spent that time with crypto? I think in India, and it's high time that the regulatory vacuum is ended. And I think that that is indeed the missing piece. I will, you know, sort of take off from here into the realm of taxes. Also, if I, uh, you know, it's not only hurting in terms of the regulatory vacuum. It's not hurting only in terms of permissibility and uh, you know regulation. It is also hurting in terms of taxation. now the thing is many of these new technologies are live as we speak they are not waiting for regulations to come up they are not waiting for law to catch up with the technology it is happening and since taxes go with the transactions we need i mean at least from the taxation perspective probably we need clarity clear, faster uh, and uh, in 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 uh, greater detail than probably some of the other aspects of uh, regulation so i think i'll add that particular nuance to the opening remarks made by sanjay 
thanks for sort of bringing that in the taxation bit and i think both the partners agree and there's a unanimity sort of coming into conversation that the missing piece definitely is a regulatory back to the regulatory limbo and that has to be solved for asap a uh, good that you brought the question of taxation and that's a great segue to our next question really and that really is about this cumbersome licensing process you know that essentially makes it to services operating in india also lacking a lot of clarity the chairperson recently uh, of the cbdt believed it was quoted that people should pay taxes on profits they get from bitcoin and they should be taxed other say the profits should be taxed as capital gains what's the view point of this panel in this regard india i'll begin with hushadeepto on this and get on to sanjay sure i think so i'll i'll break it down uh, because in india we have two taxes broadly even direct and indirect so i'll i'll touch upon both uh and essentially if i sort of go to a 10000 feet level it's a question of which box do you slot cryptocurrency in you know let's take the example of uh, let's start with gst in gst we have these categories like uh, securities or money or uh, actionable claim or goods and services okay if we look at the way some of these term securities money actionable claim have been interpreted or are defined under gst cryptocurrency may not qualify under any of these heads and then it may fall under goods even though it's an intangible because under tax law intangibles can also qualify as goods once that happens there are very disruptive sort of ramifications to that because then what we are saying is when i am buying using cryptocurrency to buy a uh, goods or services it is somewhat like a barter i am providing a goods uh, providing a good in order to obtain a goods or service and that barter has barter is uncharted territory effectively under gst it's a relatively new concept that has been taxed under gst and various ramifications including valuation etc uh, follow another sort of concept or another uh, sort of touch point is you know when uh, say a indian developer software developer is uh, or game developer is doing it for a foreign client and is expected to get paid in crypto typically when you export goods or services uh, let's stick to services here you get a lot of tax benefits refunds etc but all of that is tied to qualification as an export and that is tied to receipt of the fee in convertible foreign exchange if you try to look up convertible foreign exchange it has to be interpreted in light of fema and it has to be in light of something that rbi recognizes and rbi clearly does not recognize uh, cryptocurrency so what we are saying is if you are getting paid in crypto for export your export benefits can be gone so i think th that is that is something uh, that on which we really need clarity on very quickly and we have precedents we have precedent from australia as well as uk if we look at it on uh, in australia from july 1 2017 now that's a very ironic date because that's the date india started with gst so from july 1 2017 australia amended its gst law and clarified that uh, cryptocurrency is like any other money so when you are using cryptocurrency to buy goods or services there is no additional implication it is akin to buying it with money and we will use the valuation closest to the point of the transaction of the cryptocurrency that you're using there is no separate gst or uh, australian gst that you pay on acquisition of the cryptocurrency when you're buying it from a exchange you don't need to pay gst on that uh, transaction which is a very very critical and important clarification and similar clarification has been issued by uk uh, the hmrc is uh, they have issued a manual of crypto asset guidance which also basically echoes the same thought which to my mind a very good and laudable precedents that india can adopt i mean if australia done it in 2017 four years have passed we have enough experience to draw upon and uh, to that extent i would think that's a that's a good precedent to sort of uh, follow coming to uh, you know on the income tax side i mean we have the same issue how do we slot it uh income tax laws also do not specifically categorize deal with uh, you know uh, uh, cryptocurrency as such they have been treated as digital assets in most countries uh, as per public domain information uk us are treating it as capital assets so an indian 
uh, definition of capital assets is fairly wide enough to do i mean they can cover uh, crypto in capital assets in which case you know if you're holding it for more than 3 years it becomes long term capital gains etc you pay tax at 20% but then if government does not agree with a capital asset classification then it becomes income from other sources in which case it will be as per your slab and if you are taxable income is more than 10 lakhs a year then we are talking about a tax rate of 30% plus so if and and so that's the sort of dichotomy or that's the impact of lack of clarity so it's i mean laudable and we all agree with the government and the cbdt that we must pay taxes but how i think unless we know how where to slot this particular thing that the government has to help us with that the regulator has to help us with and probably as i said you know quicker than uh, other regulatory aspects because these transactions are happening in thousands if not more as we speak okay oh well, that's a pretty fair point a pertinent point brought to the fore here shubhit to and i want to sort of get you sanjay what one really understands is that perhaps the head or the box seems to be missing i mean there is a huge want of identity for cryptos i mean how do you identify them as is it a good is it a service is it a security what should be pointed out and perhaps there could be a playbook that could be followed he gave the example of what australia did but right now we are the fundamental question the beginning the starting point essentially that how do you identify this animal as crypto and it's high time that the government did that i want to understand from you what do you think is the possible or the most sort of plausible framework for into coin crypto so no i absolutely agree uh, there are there are issues in classifying it as any of those it uh, it is probably a uh, Uh, some form of goods it is probably some form of uh, securities commodity uh, it could be some form of store of value it could be a payment instrument security it could be a derivative or it could be a mix of all of them and that's really uh, been the problem and and i completely agree shreeja we cannot really wait uh, forever to arrive at a conclusion here it is difficult um, question to answer it is uh, uh, it is very important for all of us to realize that uh, just because one particular nation state has agreed to do it in a particular way uh, we cannot really uh, follow follow that because of our internal issues but uh, uh, having said that uh, having said that we need to make sure that uh, 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 what we what we classify it is in india is something that uh, uh, is something that uh, uh, is is at least similar to other jurisdictions if not the same let's take an example of gst that shilita talked about uh, we have uh, uh, we have australia we have uk who have taken a particular position and that appears to be a reasonable position in the way people are treating this uh, this phenomenon right uh, uh, whether law has caught up to it or not is a separate question but let's just see first how the the people world over are categorizing it and 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 treating it as and they are really treating it as store of value they are treating it as something which is uh, transferred from one person to another then to a third person in between people gain value and and make some money etc some people are using it as as, as a tender uh, etc so i think it has to be a mix of all of them and if required government can come out with a new definition like the prepaid payment instruments the wallets uh, we did not have uh, uh, you know a regime of wallets etc earlier uh, now we have that we can have something similar uh, where government can define it as a particular matter and regulate it as such i think that's how we need to figure out uh, a regulatory regime okay so essentially there are no clear answers is what i'm gathering it can be a mix of various assets it is a mix if you look at it it is a mix of a lot of these it is a mix of a lot of these categories and therefore there is no choice before us but to but to define it uh, afresh and say that cryptocurrency means abc etc because the moment you define it as goods we uh, have a lot of problems because goods are treated in a particular manner and cryptocurrencies are not meant to be uh, treated as goods they they were never meant to be goods in the first place right they are not they are not meant to be uh, exchange as goods or for barter etc there is a separate use case for them for which they were built and we need to and because that use case is a very unique use case very innovative use case there has to be a very unique definition that applies to it it is not it is not currency uh, therefore you can't really because it's not legal tender yet until 
until the governments come together and recognize it as, as legal tender it is not currency yes it discharges functions of currency but it is not currency yes it has some attributes of goods but it is not goods in it in complete sense and uh, yes it has some attributes of securities uh, you know it is represent like a demat share and say one bitcoin is probably uh, for some aspects of theirs is 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 the same thing but uh, but it is not security in 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 completeness because it is not representing something which is uh, uh, which is uh, representing a share or a uh, a uh, uh, something in in a particular company or a, or an entity and which is why we need a separate definition of it all together thanks yeah, so one I point i'll that. just add uh, which i missed out on uh, one of the debates uh, in the income i mean tax space that is happening is also whether equalization levy should apply on uh, bitcoin or i mean cryptocurrency if a, say a, you know a indian resident is buying from a foreign exchange uh, exchange located outside india whether that for because equalization levy you know last year the net was cast so wide that effectively you know all sorts of uh, e-commerce based supplies etc can get covered so there is a thought process that equalization levy might also apply and then we are talking about a straight away a 2% uh, additional cost on purchase of bitcoin from uh, cryptocurrency from uh, outside india which is also i mean in the multiple areas of lack of clarity i think this is one addition that i wanted to point out so i think what i gather that there seems to be a complete vacuum when it comes to cryptocurrency starting from its definition and perhaps stitching together a constitutional framework for it if you will because when something does not really have clarity on its existence or its identity how do you sort of carve the path forward or the way forward for it and i do understand as what sanjay sort of pointed out that perhaps crypto is a unique thing in that manner where it has attributes of various things combined so how do you define this and government definitely has a difficult task at hand in this regard too uh, i i think my question i think we have a pretty interesting and very insightful conversation so far we began with this missing piece in the fluxus between the entrepreneur investor community and the regulators what really is holding them back then we also spoke about the taxation bit the identity crisis for cryptos then let's talk about this entire narrative building around virtual currency which essentially is extension of what cryptocurrencies really are uh, in 2018 rbi actually said reportedly that it did not issue any licenses to deal with virtual currencies and there would be some ban in fact on crypto for domestic exchanges in 2020 this ban was deemed unconstitutional now they're open to actually exploring blockchain to aid in financial services my question to this august panel really is that why is it always a case of one step forward and two step backwards with crypto it there seems to be an eternal tango here i start with you sanjay and then go to you should it go no like i said uh, the the and and may i just make one more point on this uh, one so so let's let 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 me bifurcate this into two buckets bucket one is the entire developed world which is also struggling with the problem of regulating crypto right and they they are struggling because of the inherent issues that come with a uh, uh, an incomplete regulation right because uh, ultimately it is something which is not a country specific uh, uh, innovation it is not like cab aggregators have come in india and started aggregating so indian government can decide how to allow them and and us government can decide how to allow them and and they can operate in their spheres here because those cap aggregators are operating in two separate jurisdictions each one of them can decide how to regulate them and there could be two separate regulations for cap aggregators in two different countries here we are talking about something which is which is everywhere all pervasive it is it is all across uh, 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 and equally accessible from all countries and equally tradable in in all countries and therefore there has to be at some level some uniformity of approach and uh, which is what the 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 countries world over are are struggling with in india the problem compounds because of the way india as an economy is structured and india is uh, is not an open economy such as uh, the us for instance india is not a very closed economy such as some of the 
say one one example is china north korea is an extreme example but china is one example that we can probably so we are somewhere in between we are a semi open economy which means that our rupee is not fully convertible but it is convertible in certain areas where the reserve bank permits it so reserve bank keeps a very close uh, watch on the money that comes into india the dollars that come into india and the rupees slash dollars that go out of india uh, and that compounds the problem for india as a country vis-a-vis -vis western uh, world or developed world uh, or or open economies and uh, uh, india being the semi open economy uh, if so for instance if certain economies which are completely open don't really have a problem of flight of capital uh, if if somebody converts uh, crypto uh, uh, usd into crypto in in us and then transfers that to singapore and then converts that into singapore dollar it is all fine because usd was anyway convertible into singapore dollars in the first place uh, freely and there was no issue but indian rupee is not freely convertible into singapore dollars you have a 250k limit per person uh, to take out money there are permitted use cases for which you can use the money etc now now this poses another layer of a of a big problem for indian regulators to look at the look at the entire issue and i think uh, why uh, there has been no concrete step on this is probably because of these multiple issues that come together before the regulator in india and uh, uh, you know it's it's a very difficult problem if you if you think of it that way but i think uh, if if we talk about solutions here i think a lot of uh, 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 discussion has happened in this panel and otherwise also on what the problems i think in terms of solution uh, at least when i think of it if i were to be uh, asked to 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 say work with the government and, and do something about it i would probably say that we sometime back came out with um, with sandboxes for uh, for certain innovative products there are regulatory sandboxes both sebi and the reserve bank have sort of acknowledged them and they they provided for their uh, respective regimes we did come out with a, a very holistic regime for gift city uh, uh, in gandhinagar which is which is considered to be an international uh, uh, play, uh, a place which has international status within india so you know investment which are made out of gift city uh, are given special treatment uh, from a, a fema and a tax perspective so why not use some of these innovations within the regulatory regime that we have let's have a combination of say a regulatory sandbox that say the reserve bank or maybe both reserve bank and sebi come out with uh, and implement it in the gift city uh, and because you know it's about flight of capital which is a primary concern for us and uh, the other concern is a tax the third concern is usage of money let's make sure that we work with uh, uh, say uh, the regulators that uh, the the, regu uh, the uh, regulatory sandbox and the innovators on the other hand and work towards resolving all those issues let's 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 have a let's have a uh, what what do they call it hackathon for figuring out whether it is possible to track uh, and trace all cryptocurrency payments in uh, from a kyc perspective from a uh, money laundering perspective what happens if uh, we use indian uh, uh, soil for uh, categorizing certain investments or certain uh, tradings as foreign tradings so one can have a say i'm just thinking aloud one can have an entity which has been given a special status or a bunch of entities which have been given special status to operate cryptocurrency business in a very tightly regulated atmosphere out of the gift city and uh, one 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 can permit certain limit based tradings and one can see how how that sort of atmosphere um, evolves and if from a security standpoint Uh, for instance rbi gives um, nbfc licenses and other licenses and there are periodic audits that rbi does uh, to make sure that they are actually uh, doing their work properly periodic audits and periodic uh, investigations can be done on these companies which are anyway operating in a sandbox mechanism maybe a monthly uh, this thing can be done quarterly and and half yearly thereafter and then one can see what are the teething issues and then solve them one by one but at least there will be a start as against this vacuum that we are in right now and it's been a few years in this so at least we start from a particular place and then see uh, where we go from there and maybe that will also help the regulators understand what what all should go into that eventual legislation that comes up and by the way legislation is 
is is good for the ecosystem we must have a legislation and we must have it sooner rather than later because uh, uh, that provides the much needed clarity on how to proceed a legislation that seeks to simply ban it is not good for anyone or uh, not even the government for for that matter because the moment you ban something and we have seen it in multiple domains the moment you ban something and public is interested in that and public considers it to be a valid uh, sort of thing then they find other other ways and means to to trade in that i'll stop here okay that was quite a mouthful and meaningful sort of submission here coming from sanjay but a few ideas came here that and i think he strongly asserted that a blanket ban is no solution for disruptive technologies coming to the fore and he also proposed the idea of having the regulatory sandbox as we saw in the case of fintech which i think when the government started it has now become the sign of shit of all eyes in the world the entire world is watching how we implemented our regulatory sandbox in fintech and some of the innovations like upi is actually being very closely watched by the economies like the uk too and perhaps india can take a huge step in formalizing a structure around cryptocurrencies or should it though i under i sort of really wonder what is your view here Uh, this entire narrative of having a regulatory sandbox and he also mentioned that perhaps some entities could be given special provisions and he mentioned diversity and the like uh, what what exactly is your view do you sort of agree with sanjay some of these ideas i mean regulatory sandbox i think is a is a must have i mean it's uh, it's a necessity now if we have spent 4 5 years in trying to figure out what is crypto uh, i think it's high time now we we you know get on with it so to say and uh, it is nothing but so regulatory sandbox i think is definitely a, a great idea sanjay gave the example of uh, gift city we have had uh, you know special regimes in a much larger way in the context of special economic zones uh, so gift city i would say is a conceptual successor to the concept of uh, special economic zones in a way so we have had those concepts these are not unknown concepts in indian law and policy i think uh, i think it is time how we craft this uh, to and you know uh, utilize this in the specific context of crypto one specific point uh, that you know, sanjay touched upon and i'll uh, spend a few seconds on that which is the concern about uh, you know flight of capital i mean you asked why you know this back and forth that we keep seeing essentially it's a, you know the fear of the unknown and in india one of the f- specific ways this fear of unknown manifests is vis-a-vis money laundering or you know usage of crypto in terrorist or other crime criminal activities and that is i think one of the things that gets cited again and again uh, the you know the the previous finance minister the late mr arun jetli also in one of his statements i remember in 2016 or 17 he highlighted this specific aspect and you know said that we are not going to allow uh, cryptocurrency to be a valid legal tender etc etc of course uh, you know lot of water has flown down the ganges since then but the point is that seems to get highlighted very often as a as a sort of impediment in terms of a wholehearted acceptance uh, vis-a-vis crypto now there are uh, you know two ways of looking at it i mean one is of course you ban everything but then you're just driving things underground i think if one thing the world has learned in every space of regulation is if you ban something if it is useful it is going to go underground and uh, it's better to you know regulate something we have the financial action task force which is like the you know sort of a apex body in terms of uh, anti money laundering related uh, po- policy and regulation they have published a very detailed guidance on virtual assets and how do you deal with uh, you know uh, the service providers in this particular space how do you prevent or at least mitigate uh, chances of uh, money laundering through some of these uh, new assets and they have come up with recommendations which essentially these are detailed recommendations i'm trying to simplify it uh, you know as much as possible possible what they're talking about is effectively license and registration based approach they're saying you have to make sure that you know all the key stakeholders in this are licensed registered and there is regular supervision or monitoring by the competent national authorities as simple as that i mean how you do that how you build up on this one line uh, concept of course you know that can vary from country to country but we are doing it i mean let's take the example of income tax i mean say if i have a bitcoin i should declare it in my income tax return if i am declaring it in my income tax return then there is some trace of that i cannot use that hopefully 
for you know a criminal activity so i think tracking tracing reporting followed by supervision followed by audits i think that's the regime one needs to get into and which is where i think working together the government working together sanjay mentioned a hackathon i think that's a brilliant idea but we need probably 200 hackathons you know to arrive at something that is acceptable both to the stakeholders as well as the government because mind you we don't need to when we are when we are doing the policy making today we are not doing it only for cryptocurrency we have to keep in mind that blockchain the you know distributed ledger technology as it's known has so many use cases so we need to have a broad based policy approach for all of these use cases as they come up we need to be able to look into the future as to you know what's in the pipeline and for that i think a constant exchange with the industry uh, some sort of a self regulation by the industry i mean self regulation we have seen has worked in multiple sectors no reason why it will not work here so i think all of these are ideas that needs to be consolidated and work together into a coherent uh, you know approach by the government that was pretty interesting and a lot of interest recommendations coming from both sanjay and shudeep so i do understand uh, shudeep so that there is complete consensus to what sanjay said in terms of regulatory framework regulatory sort of sandbox uh, for cryptocurrencies also and you mentioned that this entire tango which is always there that you know there is uh, one step forward two step backward primarily with the reason of flight of capital and perhaps the acceptance is not there and as you alluded that uh, there's always this constant fear that perhaps cryptos could be misused for terrorism and other activities um i want to understand other thing that in terms of solutioning if they were to come from this interesting conversation today uh, one can say that one definitely one recommendation is the regulatory sandbox for cryptos second is providing special provisions to organizations like gift and the third what you just mentioned that have a hackathon what else are the ideas that come to the fore before we sort of take the conversation forward and i think i completely agree with sanjay said that often in these forums problems are discussed quite a bit i think it's high time that we also suggest solutions to the foreground and perhaps assist government in formulating a policy sort of framework around it sure so i think um, one one the the most important starting point is to recognize that we cannot uh, look the other way and forget about the problem i think that's the first step uh, yes it is a disruptive technology yes it is uh, 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 it is somewhat uh, difficult to regulate there are all those problems but the solution is not to look the other way because uh, the nature of innovation is such that if you if you want to contain it it will in- innovate further right so innovation by definition is something you cannot plan for uh, which is why it is uh, something new unique innovative uh, what you can do is you can catch up to it and you will catch up to it the question is how soon or late whether we catch up to the dlt technology now and uh, and try to regulate it now or a few years from now depends on us the if we once we acknowledge this fact that yes we need to do something about it then how do we go about it like if we acknowledge that yes there is a problem with my say uh, i want to become fitter i want to do something about my body the first thing i will do is recognize it accept that yes i need to do i need to work out the second thing i will do is go to an expert and ask him to help me do it i'll hire a trainer i'll go to gym i'll do i'll read up something to yoga whatever now those are the people who uh, who are probably outside the government more than inside the government so the government once it recognizes that there is a problem that it need, need a solve for they need to go to the experts and yes there has to be a committee of people which should have entrepreneurs which uh, 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 one category of entrepreneur one category of uh, uh, evangelist who understand both technology and government uh, then people within the government people from like we have discussed there are there are going to be people from should be people from reserve bank sebi uh, cbdt uh a gst council uh ministry of commerce there are many many niti aayog that everybody should come together and take help of people who actually know it and as we have seen you know during the uh, last second wave of covid uh, the global crypto community came together because there were a lot of people of indian origin 
who, who created the atmosphere where they they drove support uh, towards um, uh, the indian crisis of the global crypto community and why don't we use people like those uh, and reach out to them on our own a lot of them i'm sure would be more than willing to help the uh, government after all this is a country of 1.3 billion people and uh, a very important uh, 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 a very important uh, place uh, as a in in terms of the world map where if here cryptocurrency or any form of dlt technology can work then definitely it will work everywhere else once we solve for india we solve for the world and why why don't we take help of people in india outside india who are willing to help the government understand how this can be regulated how this can be because if if we have five problems that the government has why don't we go to various experts who can suggest various solutions for these five problems and then see which one of these work and then whatever we think uh, uh this this committee might think works can be put into a regulatory sandbox for three months six months we come back with the learnings on the drawing board again and then keep going back until we find that perfect solution i think at least we should have a start in that, that context okay so there needs to be a more expanded set of stakeholders who will be part of the discussion Absolutely. and there should be some and there should be complete willingness to go back and forth to the drawing board to evolve consensus and perhaps also invite disagreements if any interesting discussion till now my last question really to this entire narrative is this entire new bill that we have now the cryptocurrency and regulation of official digital currency 2021 which may be tabled before the parliament the goal really is to create an official digital currency which can be issued by the RBI just given the entire conversation that we have had on cryptos till now my question really to this panel is that are we ready for this yet are they going with you should be so and get on to you sanjay i mean we are definitely ready uh, we are more than ready we have uh, we have had tremendous success with uh, you know upi and various other such digital payment technologies and the way i look at it uh, it is nothing but a digital indian rupee i mean the ones that we carry in our wallet this is a digital version of that so definitely uh, you know ready and it is definitely a welcome move there is no doubt but i think what we should not confuse this with is uh, you know that this is this has something to do with cryptocurrency i mean it may end up banning cryptocurrency and that way impact it but i think these are slightly different conversations the government is welcome and it probably should bring in a digital fiat currency but that does not impact how what i know all the discussion we have had about cryptocurrency we need to understand that why did cryptocurrency come into existence there was a felt need there was a use case that use case does not go away just because government is bringing in a fiat digital currency so we cannot think in binaries we cannot think that okay now that i am bringing in a digital currency ban everything else there will only be one sort of currency that is uh, available that doesn't work and i think that approach is uh, is dangerous and i you know like like i was mentioning that we need to have a very broad based policy approach and at this point we don't know whether you know the bill in the final form that it might get passed will reflect a broad broad based approach or not blockchain has hundreds of use cases and some of them the government is aware of some of them the government wants to leverage to ensure targeted delivery of benefits subsidies etc etc so and blockchain everything has multiple aspects so when you use that for targeted delivery it can come up with innovations you know we have spoken about crypto we have spoken about uh, non fungible tokens nfts who knows tomorrow what is going to come up unless we have a broad based approach in the manner that sanjay outlined where you know multiple experts multiple stakeholders come in and sort of agree we start with a regulatory sandbox we you know we explore having a consultation paper we take the re- regular feedback and maybe you know uh, after a while we arrive at uh, some sort of a le- legislation which is done in the in a democratic way in its widest possible ramification so i think th- that that is the way forward this particular uh, bill to the extent that it uh, you know envisages banning of cryptocurrency might be myopic might be short sighted because okay. as we say i mean the moment to ban you know it, it just goes underground great i come to you now sanjay and perhaps this really are the concluding remarks to what we heard from to the people he said two interesting things is that 
we should not be thinking in binary, which is not one versus the other. And if the government starts thinking like that, then whatever work has been done till now goes under the bus. And second, this entire attitude of having a broad-based approach should be applicable to other disruptive technologies that come to the fore. Uh, I would sort of like the floor open for a concluding remark before we get into a quick rapid fire and some of this interesting conversation. No, absolutely. I think uh, this will, how we deal with crypto in some form will shape the, the narrative going forward and India will be seen as uh, a country who deals with uh, innovations in a particular way. This will basically form our opinion uh, for, for, the, for the entire world. Uh, and also for for entrepreneurs in the in the country, like we should also uh, realize that if we create a vacuum like this, where uh, our brightest minds who want to work on something as interesting, I I I, I speak to a lot of uh, uh, people in the industry. I speak to a lot of youngsters who are in engineering colleges. My own brother is studying, and every techie today is enthused about this entire phenomenon which is DLT. It is not necessarily trading in cryptocurrencies. It is the innovation itself. And and the and and blockchain as a technology is being touted as the next internet. And if we if we just stay away from it and ban it completely without knowing what the uh, what we are turning away overall uh, or what it could have been uh, uh, it could have resulted in had we regulated in a in a particular manner, etc. We may not even know what we may lose out on. We may not even know what we may create in in a in in an informal economy slash black market, whatever you want to call it. We may not even know what we have done unknowingly. And therefore, I think my biggest uh, uh, concern is that we will unknowingly take steps which are not good for us in the long term. So whatever we sh we do, we should at least know and understand it first in 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 a very holistic manner, and then take a call. And I think this will form the template of how we deal with innovation going forward. If we find one rightful way to, uh, yes, there has to be a solution to it. There has to be a final uh, understanding of how it should be regulated, what should be done. But how we arrive at that will determine how we where we progress as a tech. A, a fairly regulated tech society because we are going to we are already a, a tech society we are moving towards a fully integrated tech society going forward now how we how we reach there will will determine a lot of our future right and suppose if and my very uh, uh, hopeful uh, piece here but suppose in the next six months we have a very good regime of regulatory sandbox or whatever it may be Suppose there is something that the Indian government comes out with, which is really innovative in, in, in the way it regulates uh, the entire cryptocurrency uh, uh, ecosystem, and and then we and then we uh, we we give it out as a signal to the uh, entire world that look, this is how we deal with technology, this is how we regulate it, and this is how we provide for support, etc., for people who want to work in that area, and that forms a template. Every new entrepreneur. Instead of thinking of going outside the country and uh, uh, you know doing something outside the country first and then coming back to India and implementing it here, would want to first do it here. In fact, who knows? We may in fact attract people who want to do it in India who don't even belong to India. People like today we have a problem of retaining our entrepreneurial pool in the country so that they can do their innovations here. They can run their uh, uh, innovations here, and that can help the government and the country in the long term. What just imagine what would happen if people from across the countries are coming to India because India is seen as a country which understands technology, which which supports and encourages new technologies and innovation and has a robust regulatory regime. We will not reach there in, in the next one year or two years. We will probably reach there in the next 30 years, 20 years. But you have to start somewhere. If India has to become a somebody who's you know who people look forward to, see, we are a nation of Techies and we are a nation of uh, 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 you know people who are good handling money and cryptocurrency is just that right like people hire uh, Indians all across for their technology work for their finance uh, advisories etc like we are and and this is the uh, 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 melting pot of all of them yeah. it is yeah it is all of we can't we can't be the nation that bans it 
right we can't be the nation we have to be the nation that comes out with a unique solution of regulating it and telling telling the world that look this is how you do it and then people should turn to india and maybe uh, you know we, we that's how we attract innovation now what we are doing here right now is saying that look if you have any innovation please keep it to yourself and please find some country which permits you to uh, implement that innovation we are not that country for you uh, okay so that's a fair point yeah and that's a very passionate appeal coming from sanjay here and i hope the government is listening that if we want to become a fully integrated tech society especially given india has an ambition of becoming a five trillion economy in the next five years we need to be seen by the world as being open as being one which is having a solution mindset having a broad based approach to new ideas and not one which is regressive and has a blanket ban on new technologies and its innovative talent that's fairly said and great points coming the four by both shridip to and sanjay both the partners of kitan and company thank you so much for giving us a great sort of rundown on what is the state of crypto in india and what really is the gap between the innovator community and the regulator community and more importantly the solutions to the four now it's time for a quick rapid fire on the light note i begin with you sanjay How much is your portfolio in cryptocurrency as of today? <laughs> I, I don't have anything. <laughs> Someone who said you're a big believer in crypto and not investing in crypto. That's like a dichotomy here. So, so I once when when I was buying my house, for instance, I I reached out to my uh, friends in real estate uh, practice. Buying a house is a very normal thing. They advise day in day out. But uh, and it is it is like a doctor uh, not treating his own. Uh, Uh, uh family members etc uh yes i have uh, i have taken exposure once in a while but i don't have any significant exposure that's what talking about it but but i know i i did it i have also done it to make sure that i know how it works so it's not as if that i am not uh, uh uh i've dabbled with it i've seen it but i've also uh, realized and this is i i keep a lot of people ask me uh because i advise a lot of people in the crypto ecosystem people ask me they should i pick up some crypto should i do this and my advice to all of them is that look do it first understand it and then you do as much as you want it so and and the regulatory sandbox approach actually works there as well because you need to first do it in small portion it's like stock uh, trading in some way you you can't be putting money in random stocks un- unless you understand the stock market and the companies etc so i have done it to understand the system but i don't think i am uh, uh, i can i can invest that i i don't have the tech capability to understand the integrities of it and therefore i uh, i i don't get too much into it but i but i done some bit of it to understand the system okay i, think I got put off you? i got put off fairly early i think uh, like a year or a couple of years back there was a boom and just when i thought you know i'll dip my toes it started coming down and then i heard a lot of people losing money so yeah i i mean like many many middle class indians i am risk averse when it comes to investments so yeah it is a dichotomy i mean we are advising but uh, uh, yeah i think that, that's what it is okay uh, sanjay how would you sort of now convince someone like elon musk to get back his interest into cryptos and bitcoins no so i think uh, the the way to look at it is that it is very it's a very opinionated uh, regime at this point people are uh, because because things have not evolved to a stage where um, where you know it is like it is like if stock market was around when uh, people could have just uh, raised money for anything that they liked it is something like that so there are uh, what i feel is that there are great uh, products in the ecosystem where people are raising genuine money and and from what i understand of the ecosystem those uh those things will do well in future because those are like your um uh, companies which have strong fundamentals as we call them in uh, in in normal stock market parlance similarly there are uh there are uh those protocols as they are called in the crypto domain there are certain protocols which are really really great fundamentally and people who understand this technology uh, will probably uh, tell you better that one has to dis- distinguish between what is fundamentally strong versus what is just hype and i think this will become clearer as more and more people understand this ecosystem and that will just be from basic tech education 
like my big background is in law and therefore i did not have too much of tech exposure but over a period of time i have learned some bit of technology and i know uh, how certain things work a lot of my other lawyer friends know better than me in some technologies and uh, it, it, people will just catch up and the moment uh, you know 5 6 years down the line 10 years down the line a lot of people will uh, 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 understand this uh, entire blockchain technology much better and then they could they could call a hype very clearly out from say a really fundamentally strong uh, uh, protocol i i think that's where maybe mr musk's uh, interest will also i think he he uh, he understands this much better than most of us so i i don't think we need to tell him anything about the ecosystem Okay. I think one I think point I'll is, make. So one small point is, I mean, one of the drivers, uh, at least uh, reportedly, uh, behind Mr. Musk, uh, Musk's uh, reluctance is the environmental aspect of it, of Bitcoin, and I'll, I think a lot has been spoken and written about that, at the cost of mining the Bitcoin and the high intensity energy requirement. I think at some point, uh, and you know, we are still talking in India. We are still talking about is it permissible or not, etc. at some point in future hopefully you know not too far away we may need to integrate some of our renewable energy policies you know uh, to crypto mining because uh, if uh, crypto is leading to a huge burnout in terms of uh, environment if uh, bitcoin mining or similar mining is uh, taking a toll on uh, our uh, energy demand I, th- i think that's one aspect where the policy making has to uh, you know intervene yeah and all of this should be part of the regulations by the way from my perspective when yeah. you know when you look at regulating something you you regulate all aspects of it so if you think that as a country we don't want to encourage uh, a particular type of uh, 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 you know activity or behavior in this entire ecosystem then you probably put we have you know extra taxes in some piece we have prohibitions in other, other places etc but you regulate and you understand what is happening in each domain and you do what you uh what do you what do you think is most appropriate for your jurisdiction okay my last question from musk to india's guy rakesh junjunwala i think if we convince someone like him who's a stock market guru to at least go on a tv channel and talk about crypto i think there'll be a bull run in crypto uh, so i think shudeep so if you were to be stuck in an elevator and do a two minute pitch with rakesh junjunwala and convince him about crypto because i personally feel that what crypto is lacks right now are more old school sponsors for it we need more people who are old school thinking to come out the fore and talk about the technology behind it and extend some support rather than the new guys doing it uh, so your two minute pitch to chinchin wala what would that really be and then we wrap this up <laughs> i don't know if i am capable of making such a pitch to mr chinchin wala uh, and in fact uh, it's not only mr chinchin wala even i think uh, warren buffet has uh, you know famously dissed uh, this entire uh, cryptocurrency Absolutely. concept but i think in it it boils down to uh, what sanjay said that uh, fundamentally is it strong is there some worth in it and i think that's what i mean whether it's a old school guy or any any prudent investor uh, is going to look at it i think the way we need to pitch it or the way we need to understand it is that distributed ledger technology is the future and there, there are no i don't think that point is debated and cryptocurrency is one of the use cases of that maybe some of the valuations that we saw last year or so that was inflated but that happens even in the stock market i mean there has been a lot of theory about uh, valuation we saw some of the recent ipos that have happened you know so i'm saying there are bubbles uh, in every sphere in every commodity every asset class so bubbles i don't think per se is a reason why one should one should stay away from a particular asset class cryptos as a uh, you know as a as a asset class there is a very significant use case which is why every passing day it's you know multiplying by uh, by several degrees the usage of it so i think staying away from this uh, probably is not the wisest uh, uh, choice in that sense you know like uh, sanjay said you don't know what we are going to miss out on and crypto is probably one manifestation of a you know blockchain use case uh, with nfts etc all of those things coming in i think it is high time to invest i mean i don't know if that's a two minute pitch or uh, you know whatever but uh, i think that's why one should uh, one should look at it okay before i wrap up sanjay any last concluding sentence or last word from you 
no so i think uh, i think high time we uh, we really figure out a way to uh, to work together on this there is a lot of interest and we have seen it like any any anything to do with crypto gets a uh, immediate attention and uh, i think it's high time that we get this interest culminated into some action on the part of uh, the government which should be somewhat open i think the government is actually doing uh, its bit i empathize with them because the problem is very very difficult for them to solve but i think at the same time they should probably reach out to or maybe allow people or if it's already happening great if it's not happening i i guess people from the industry and the government should work together and find some sort of a solution and in small measures uh, uh you know uh, get some get some solutions going very very quickly uh, and if there are any fallacies we should learn from them and implement something new okay thanks anjay and thanks sudeep so for your time and energy to this wonderful conversation we had this amazing mint director conversation platform created in partnership with kitan and company and to our audiences who are so patient and listening to this please stay tuned in for the next episode to discuss some interesting ideas to open for debate and discussion till time i see you next goodbye and good luck and thank you so much for joining in thank you thank you thanks